Sally Parks from the Palm Harbor Historical Society, and I'm pleased to be in Bamboo Gardens today, which is on the corner of County Road 1 and Virginia Street in Palm Harbor. And with me are Marianne and Jerry Smith, who are the owners of the garden uh, and the house uh, adjoining it. Tell me about you two first, uh, and uh, we'll get to Bamboo Gardens and Bamboo in just a few minutes. Okay. Marianne? Um, so Marianne, tell me, where were you born and when? I'm originally from Illinois mm -hmm. and um, met Jerry when we uh, were at a small college in southern Wisconsin together. And the rest is history. Okay. Yeah. And Jerry? I was born in southern Illinois uh, and um, lived there for about five or six years. We moved to Chicago. And uh, from Chicago, I went on to Milton College, which is a small school that I met Marianne. And um, we've been together ever since. Mm -hmm. so. so what year were you married? Pardon? What year were 65. 65. You were married in yeah. 65, okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. And you have a family. You have two children. Yep. Two children, a son in Cleveland and a daughter in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and two grandchildren in Atlanta. And they were raised in Florida? Um, Adam mostly. He was uh, born in North Dakota. We were, I was teaching up in North Dakota for a while. And um, then Jenny was born in Florida. She's a native Floridian, but neither Mary Ann, myself, or my son are Floridians mm -hmm. by birth. Mm -hmm. So I would guess that Florida looked real attractive if you were living in North Dakota. It looked really <laughs> attractive. I was getting out of graduate school and uh, I knew I did not want to go back to North Dakota. So we looked around and I had hitchhiked down here when I was a youngster, about 17, 18 years old. I had, a, had an aunt in Tampa and I always had good memories of that. So I thought this job came up in uh, Clearwater, Florida and um, I decided to take it and I did. So and by then you had, had your, you had your PhD? Yes, from uh, Purdue. Mm -hmm. And so and it was time what, to leave what Purdue. Was your, what was your specialty? Uh, I was a behavioral biologist uh, working with insects primarily. Mm -hmm. And you taught at St. Petersburg College? Taught at St. Petersburg College for around 30 years. Right. And we ran the nursery in our spare time. Okay. So we'll <laughs> talk about that in a minute. Marianne, what was your major in college? And um, English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. And uh, I taught Spanish in North Dakota at a college up there for a while. And then Here took over took over the nursery when we came to Florida. Right. Yeah. So originally you lived in Clearwater for a couple of years. Yes. Or two yeah. Three years, yeah. and then you and then you landed this. Why did you choose to live here? <laughs> I, I, can I tell this story? Sure, okay. Of course. Marianne, uh, <laughs> we were building a room on a house in Clearwater, and Marianne kept doing things like, "I'm not sure I like that chocolate." colored tile with that particular paint sort of thing. And finally I just, you know, I says, you know, I bet your mom would love to go shopping. Why don't you give her a call and you two can go shopping, you know. So Marianne got out of the house and I got busy and was, she came back in about three hours and she said, can you grow plants? And I said, yeah, sure. You know, I've always had gardens and things like that, always had a good, a good feel for plants. Mm -hmm. And she said, there's a nursery for sale up in the north part of the county, up in a place called Palm Harbor. She said, you want to go take a look at it? And I did. And uh, we talked about it, and we bid on it, and 30 days later, we were in the nursery business. Wow. Yeah. So you have a nurse, you have a home here, of course. Yes. Uh -huh. So, but you have a nursery. So was it always a bamboo nursery? No. When we bought it, it was tropical low-light foliage plants, philodendrons, diefenbachia, aglaonema. And... We grew those and sold to florists, and we, did, we were doing fairly well. And yeah. then uh, in the 80s, there were some serious freezes, and we got blacked out on our power, and everything froze, except a few bamboo stalks that had been put years ago back by the creek. So we decided, ah, the bamboo is green, everything else is slimy and dead. So we went to bamboo exclusively by the early 90s. Mm -hmm. So how did you learn about bamboo? I mean, other than the fact that it survived uh, a bad winter. I read a lot. Yeah. 
So that and was I not talked to your people. expertise anywhere in biology or in uh, No, I hated bamboo anything. for a long time. I oh, really, we had a friend that was a collector. And uh, he always said, you really should yeah. do bamboo, you really should do bamboo. And I said, David, no, no. I don't well, the name of the nursery was Bamboo Gardens. Oh, it was, it's always been that name. Been, always it's since been, the 40s, it's yeah. been called Bamboo Gardens. Uh -huh. And so, you know, he kept saying, you should sell bamboo. And I said, no, no, no. People know us as foliage growers. Well, it turned out people didn't know us so well for foliage growers. <laughs> but bamboo was a natural. So uh -huh. it worked out fine for us. And isn't it interesting how bamboo is kind of caught on, if you will, not yeah. by plants, but by popularity and Asian-themed things? I think it's because that. it's more familiar now. People aren't, aren't afraid of it. Right. That's true. Yeah. The, other, the other thing about the time that we had to switch to bamboo exclusively was just about the time that Martha Stewart had invented bamboo curtain rods, which were very, oh, very yes. in very for a while. Right. Yes. <laughs> so people would see bamboo in the titles yeah. of, of our, you know, on our web or whatever, and, and they'd think, oh, do you have curtain rods? Well, yes, and we happened to have the plants they came from, too, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was uh, kind of just luck and timing on that, I think. Well, that, that's terrific, and I'm glad that you did. So, if we can just take a minute, and whatever you know about the background of this place as a gardens and a, and a plant place, I'll let Marianne talk to that. She really knows yeah, more about the history. And I think you, had, you said you had a license plate from yeah. Nebraska, so that talks about maybe the, one of the earliest persons that yeah, was here maybe um, in the garden. Go ahead, and when, oh. when Fred's thing comes up, I'll <coughs> and, jump in and here. And what I know is primarily undocumented. It's, it's word of mouth and hearsay and just the bits and snatches we have from old paperwork here. But the nursery was established in 1926. It's one of the oldest nurseries on the west coast of Florida. And, and you have the sign out in front to yes, tell it, don't yes. you? Yes, and it was established by the Sutherland Land Development to grow the plantings for the median strips in Old Palm Harbor. You're familiar with the median strips, but they grew a lot of bedding plants and some palms at that mm -hmm. time. And it evolved gradually. We're, I'm not sure who the original owners were. I believe people named Campbell had something to do with it, although I am not certain on that. Um, but Fred and Mildred Allen bought it in the early 40s and it had been called Palm Harbor Nursery and Fred got here and about the same time the, the uh, Army Corps of Engineers redredged the creek and they had planted bamboo along one bank to help stabilize it. Mm -hmm. And the creek went back to its original creek bed as water does. But the bamboo remained, and so Fred decided it, Bamboo Gardens was a logical name for the place. Mm. And he was the one who started the foliage business and was quite successful. Right. Then in the 60s, the late 60s, some people named Furlow bought it, and every once in a while one of their older empl or old employees or uh, one of their comes daughters. over, and they had a, a family reunion here a whole number of years ago because they had really loved this place. Mm -hmm. And I bet they loved what you've done with it, too. You they did. Amazing. They said, they were, they you've were done the place. things that we were going to do but never got around to, which made me feel pretty good. Sure. Yeah. And then there was um, another couple, Furlow sold it in the 70s, and another couple had bought it very, very briefly. They were only here about four, three or four months. Yeah. And we bought it from them then yeah. after my... my <coughs> lunch with my mother. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's dangerous to send her out for lunch, isn't it? I know, I know. Well, <laughs> I, no, actually not, advice. really. It's been an exciting thing. That's good. Yeah. So this is, you've been here how many years? Um, 35, Since 1978, 36, 36 uh -huh. perhaps, yeah. Right. And our kids have essentially grown up here. Yeah. And mm -hmm. So you're kind of one of the last pieces, maybe the last piece of agricultural land in North Pinellas County that I'm aware of. I, I guess so. They're Commercially agriculture, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, think I mean, so. there's there's large large pieces of land, but I don't think they're being cultivated as this place is. Mm -hmm. We we actually grow crops of bamboo and mm -hmm. and sell mm -hmm. what we what we grow on our own land here. So because we're we're legitimately green belt. So mm -hmm. the interesting thing is when we first bought the place, it was the smallest agricultural parcel in in the area. And now I think we're the largest. I would think so. Or one yes. of the but largest. We were yeah. surrounded by we were surrounded groves. by groves, you know, sure. acres and acres of grove land, and, mm -hmm. and back when the road was a brick road and, and very narrow. And 
So what was your impression of Palm Harbor when you came up here? Maybe that, uh, maybe <laughs> be, that be honest, you no. shopping or, or <laughs> I don't think I ever made it uptown that day. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, we found, the, we, were, we were the new kids on the block and uh, became friends with some other people around mm -hmm. and gradually were assimilated into the old mm -hmm. Palm Harbor culture. Mm -hmm. But I um, always loved it. and have been active in the historical or was active in the historical society for a while when they decided they wanted to widen County Road 1 and make it into a belcher. And Actually I, I remember that day very well because we were standing near the gazebo in, uh, on, on uh, 12th oh. and um, Georgia mm -hmm. maybe. Up behind the, and, the, yeah. the bank whatever. Right, yeah. right. And uh, I was just newly elected to office and I thought I was going to be lynched that day. <laughs> yeah. People were very mad about the yes. road being widened. Yes. Yeah. Well, and some good compromises took place. Well, we decided, Winona place. Jones and I decided a good way to get around that was to establish a historical district, yes. which we did. Yes. And then we had some leverage, and, and they had to be kind of careful as to how, how wide they could make mm -hmm. the road. Yep. And, uh, and as you remember, Brian Smith was there. Oh, yes. You know, he could see that there were possibilities of medians but breaks for, for uh, street crossings and that right. kind of mm -hmm. thing. That, mm -hmm that, uh, you know, didn't make it a Belcher Road and yes. on those six lanes. But I must say, as a county commissioner, I often look back and say some of those mistakes we made, I, I won't name them right now, but some mistakes <laughs> that we made of road widening are like, even now, I still sort of gulp at them, and I'm really proud of what we did with County Road Widening. Sure, I think it's I beautiful, think it actually, yeah. 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 Um, so, but I want to now talk a little bit about bamboo, because I think most of us don't know very much about it. I mean, we think bamboo is bamboo and uh -huh. I think there's a lot of different kinds. I think I heard one time that you went lecturing on different, some different kinds of bamboo. Well, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> called on. We have about 50 to 55 different kinds here on the property. Some are running, which we don't sell. I just like them because they're pretty, you know, but uh, so I collected bamboo before we started to sell it and um, we actually sell only clumping bamboo which is a bamboo that is non-invasive, does not invade your neighbor's yard, nor does it, does it become a problem. And so we've stuck pretty close to that. When we first started out, we used to sell running bamboo. And pretty soon I was serving as an expert witness, neighbor against neighbor. And I thought, this is not good for me or for bamboo. And so uh, we stopped selling it. And it's a, something I've never regretted because uh, People buy our bamboo and put it in the ground, and it pretty much stays where they put it, which I'm, I'm very happy about. But bamboo grows all the way from, oh, probably three and a half feet, all the way to as much as 80 to 85 feet. Mm -hmm. You're going to see some of that. We're almost standing under some of it. Yes, right exactly. Now. We're some right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a and good it's representation. Fast growing. fast growing. Usually we, we tell people that they can get a full size plant. Now that's as far as the height, mm -hmm. in about three years after they've planted it. Um, to get full volume of numbers of stalks, of course, takes many years. Right. So. Did I understand something that I read correctly, that most bamboo grows out of the ground the size that it's going to grow all the way yes, up? Yes, this is true. Uh -huh. And it grows over a period of somewhere between 6 to 10 weeks, and it reaches its full height. So if it's an 85-foot bamboo, in 10 weeks, it'll be 85 feet. And when it comes out of the ground, it's big. For, for, because the taller the bamboo, the larger the diameter for the bamboo. So if you want a short bamboo, usually you end up with a thin stem. Mm -hmm. If you want a tall bamboo, you end up with a very thick stem. Mm -hmm. What do you know about bamboo, Marianne? <coughs> it's a wonderful plant. It's very versatile. Mm -hmm. It can serve many, many purposes, the different varieties. Um, I Talk sell a lot. What are some of those purposes? Um, hedging. I've got a hedging, a great hedging bamboo in, in a moderately sunny area. I've got one variety of it that will um, pretty much block out a one-story house next door and another variety that will block out a two-story house. And then I have my third floor balcony blocking bamboo. Don't forget the hot tub bamboo, Marianne. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, and then um, uh, I won't a mention a, a location, but there is a, on, on one of the major highways here, there was a third floor hot tub off the master bedroom 
and they wanted a wall of privacy for the major road and they planted the 60 foot bamboo and it's doing beautifully and they can go out and nobody knows what color suits they're wearing in their hot tub and but uh, or whether they're wearing suits at all well yeah you know we don't get that personal i can't see yes we don't know we don't know hear no evil see no evil but it's if you you want it just as a specimen plant in an oriental style garden or just as a specimen plant there are several that are very outstanding for that um, others that make good shelter belts or wind breaks if you need them. <coughs> um, some just purely ornamental, like I, we, I hope we get a chance to see some around yeah. here mm-hmm. for good. planters and things like that. Mm-hmm. But so what do people use bamboo for besides a beautiful garden? There are some folks that I know that make furniture. Oh, yeah. Floors. Yeah. Why, why is bamboo a desirable kind of... It's, well, first of all, it's very sustainable. I mean, if you cut it down, you could take a stalk, the bamboo puts another stalk up. And so In three for years. every stalk you take, you get one or two more. So it's continually renewing itself. And uh, I think this is the thing that appeals to people, uh, especially for furniture making. They can go in and have a grove of bamboo, select the finest pieces, build their furniture, come back next year and still find very nice pieces. Once they have cut a tree, that tree takes 50 to 60 years to grow. So bamboo takes about three years. Yeah. Seems to be a no-brainer. Very good point. Yeah. Very good point. Sustainability. And it's a sturdy? Uh, very sturdy. Uh-huh. Uh, approaches steel as far as the strength on compression. Is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, flooring and furniture. Much of the bamboo we grow here, the tropical or subtropical, it doesn't have the strength. I, I don't think I'd want to sit on too many chairs made out of some of our bamboos. A lot of that and the flooring is made from a different kind that's a little bit um, thicker walled mm-hmm. and uh, grown in, in more temperate climates. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the, the furniture that you see the beautiful furniture that you see in some of the mm-hmm. fancy magazines with the very large caliper mm-hmm. combs in, in the legs and the bright yellow colors. That is uh, probably a guadua, which it does not grow here at all. It needs a mountain, more mountainous climate. And, and much warmer. It grows near the equator. Right. Yeah. That's the thing that I find amazing about bamboo is that you can find it almost anywhere that I've I, traveled at least. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen it. Except in, this country. Uh-huh. The thing about, we have very few native bamboos. There's about two different uh, genus of bamboo in this country, and that's it. And they're not very attractive, frankly. So most of the bamboo that you see has been imported from Africa, South America, Asia. It was difficult for them to determine sources of a lot of them. Most have bamboo. The exception is the North American continent has very little of it. So So it can even grow where it snows, can't it? Sure. Oh yeah, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of bamboo in the in some of the gardens in Massachusetts. Usually, but the minimum temperature is around minus 10 Fahrenheit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Although a, a grower friend of ours in Tennessee, it got down to 11 below, and he put a lot of hay bales over his his bamboo. Yeah, but and, it's you know it's uh, not normal kind of thing. Yeah, okay, you know. but he's right. survived. But right. uh, but it so does it grows are, on every continent. Uh, also. Um, there is one bamboo that may or may not be a Florida native bamboo. It's an Arundinaria. I have a specimen pot of it here, but it is a runner. It probably was growing up in Jacksonville area and at, up along the coast there. And at the time they, they uh, started their rice and indigo plantations, they cleared it all out because nobody was using the bamboo for anything. And they had, you know, the indigo and the rice were much more productive. But it, it may or may not, it's, it's, if, if people are interested in Florida native plants, this is probably pretty close to it. Mm-hmm. Canebrake bamboo was the name yeah. of that, was uh-huh. the common name. Uh-huh. So you see it in historical books, right. talking about the canebrakes, which are large expanses. Of, and that's been pretty much wiped out, as Marianne said. So. And is that sandy soil? What's the soil for bamboo, or a variety of kinds of Almost, bamboo? you can find it growing on rocky areas, sandy areas, mud areas. Doesn't like to have wet feet, though. If you've got an area that you want to put bamboo and it stands water for any length of time, probably bamboo is not a good choice for that area. Other than that, it just needs uh, moisture 
and well-drained soil. It's a grass, and it's... If what you, do you love most about bamboo? Let me tell you what I love most, and mm. that is the sound. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, we have bamboo, as you know, that we got from you that's in our yard that's higher than a telephone pole, and when it, when it's breezy, it sounds like it's raining. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's beautiful. They make different noises. The different kinds of bamboo make different noises. We have that some that right? whoosh, some that kind of sound like a woman moaning, um, some that clonk like a giant wind chime. You can tell which way the wind is blowing sometimes by the old hammy out on the creek bank because it t makes different noises if, if, with, you know, east winds and south winds. And yeah, it does. The other thing I think I like the best about bamboo is new shoots. They come up every year and it's like brand new. Baby being born. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's brand new, you know, and it comes up it's a renewal every year. It's one of the one of the best looking plants when it first comes out of the ground. It just springs up overnight and keeps growing and it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. I I never tire of watching new shoots. And when is the renewal? In the springtime or not? You, usually in our season here it's in the rainy season. Mm -hmm. So if if we have a late rainy season, doesn't happen until July, then the shooting occurs in July. If it happens in June, the rainy season, then we get shooting in June. Temperature and moisture is key. Mm -hmm. So, do you raise any bamboo that pandas would like to eat? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah. We don't have any pandas. No, it's a, good. It's a, that's a good thing, yeah. Our we wouldn't predator. have any bamboo if we had pandas. No, they love the Pseudosasa japonica. We have clumps of that along the creek bank also for stabilization. It is a more or less a running bamboo. It's a clumping runner. So, yeah. we don't sell that either. But um, no. In fact, years ago, when Bush Gardens, uh, they had adopted two pandas at one point, and they sent some of their yard, their maintenance people over to dig. And they took 300 they plants took off 300 the property. 300 clumps. And you of couldn't even tell they'd the been here. The Sasa. There is a and lot of bamboo Planted it at around their panda gardens. house. It was still there last time we were there, but that's been a long time yeah. ago. So the pandas were gone. Yeah. Okay. I was wondering if you had ever been approached by a zoo. Yeah, or we had. Because yeah, we were we in had. Atlanta Zoo. And it was just mostly for the atmosphere. Yeah. China dictated that they import the bamboo from China to feed their special mm -hmm. pandas. Well, mm -hmm. they also discovered eventually that it was cheaper than <laughs> digging bamboo here and, That's and true. feeding the yeah. pandas. Then it was cheaper to fly it in from China. Okay. But we were at Atlanta Zoo just a year ago, and they have three pandas there. And they had just been fed the time we saw them, and it was just piles of the pseudosasa. And I said, "Whoa, you know, we should have brought we, some." We know that bamboo. We yeah, yeah, right. We know that bamboo. We could sell it, you know. So. Yeah, really. Panda food—that's that's a whole new. Uh, yeah, right. Whole, okay. <laughs> whole new audience to go to. What are some of the more unusual questions that people have asked you about bamboo, or people that have purchased bamboo here and? said what they were going to do with it and you thought they were crazy or something. Well, we get a lot of, I hate my neighbor. We don't ah, like that very yes, much. But yes. And, and uh, you know, what can I plant that will invade his yard? Mm -hmm. And, of course, since we don't sell invasive bamboo, we can't help them out, which I think is a good thing, actually, mm -hmm. for neighborhood relations anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, revenge planting of bamboo oh, seems I to. Oh, I don't <laughs> like that term. We also, for a while... Um, at the time, and this has been, what, eight years, eight, ten years, they started selling uh, the smaller houses for teardowns along the water mm -hmm. and building the three-story mm -hmm. large ho homes. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, they'd leave a little bitty house in between two great big houses, and the little bitty house was looking up at three stories and, and air conditioning on two floors and all sorts of things. And that's, that's my third-floor balcony blocking bamboo, mm -hmm. which fits in a narrow lot. Right. So. But that was, uh, thoughtless neighbors are another thing that kind of, and yard lights, and these are, these are negative things. Mm -hmm. And, but we've, I've heard, I think the most unique story I ever heard of why somebody wanted bamboo was because the neighbors had a large plastic green turtle that was a sandbox, I think, or a wading pool or something. And they had stored it on their flat garage roof, which <laughs> they was one story, and these people lived on the second story. And every time they were out on their balcony or looking, <laughs> looking down, they saw this <laughs> this bright green turtle on the roof. So they yeah. needed. I sold some to hide the turtle, mm -hmm. hide the and turtle. I think it worked. Well, yeah. I mean, 
visual screens are what we this use is, a we lot. get this, and I hear exactly. and and it does I hear a some of the saddest. Yeah. You know, I hear stories that just you know, people have cut right. down trees on a Sunday afternoon without permits, mm -hmm. and yeah. Do you ever have people come in and say, "Well, I want to look at your bamboo because I plan on building some furniture," and you have to say, "Well, this is probably not the right bamboo for you." I mean, is that well, okay. yeah, but you know, there's also uh, there's a fellow in Dunedin who builds furniture out of bamboo. Mm -hmm. So we refer to him frequently, mm -hmm. and so we we refer a lot of people because. Um, Don Eicher does a nice job of building uh, furniture yeah. out oh, of bamboo. He's lived here in Palm Harbor, as a matter of fact. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he well, does. he's moved now to Bel Air, but I see that, Don. Okay, I, yeah, I, was, I wondered where he was. He's I knew he wasn't real close. Yes. For us and, yeah. And, uh, I have him on speed dial. He did your <laughs> fence. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. He did. Well, he's done several things for yeah. us, uh, inside and outside. Okay. So he's, uh, but, he, and he's, and he loves bamboo. I mean, he really oh, yeah. loves to work with it. So it's, uh, he finds a lot of joy in it. It's an unusual plant to work with. It is not, it's non-dimensional, like a two by four or four by four. Right. So you have to kind of work with each individual piece as uh -huh. a unique piece of wood. And Don's very good at that. He has a good eye. Yes, right. And he likes new challenges, yeah. too. We, yeah. He says, I get tired of building tiki bars and beds. You know, tell me something else yeah. that you want. <laughs> right. and he, he did great. We yeah. do um, harvest some of the old hammy. It's the tall, straight along the creek. Mm -hmm. And um, cure it, dry it and sell it in, in pieces. People use it for trimming tiki huts, mm -hmm. um, musical instruments. It makes wonderful mm -hmm. rain sticks or didgeridoos. Mm -hmm. um, trim on, the, oh, let's see. Like a chair rail. They chair split rails, a piece in half, yeah. put it around the edge we of the don't, room. We don't have any mode for um, curing it or fireproofing it, so we, don't, we discourage uh, using it as uh, ceilings or, yeah. or too much inside. But uh, they use it for decorative things, picture frames that mirrors. Right. Things like that. Right. So, anything else that I ought to know about bamboo that I haven't asked you? We're gonna we're gonna walk around a little bit, but I yeah. just want to yeah. finish up here and, and then we'll walk around and look at some of this bamboo that you have in your yard. So, um, what do you think your legacy is as uh, bamboo people and as, uh, as and as human beings too? You can go any route you yeah. want. Yes, I we have lived here long enough that I feel good about leaving it in better shape than when we came. I've always thought that land ought to be cherished by people. They ought to, to not abuse it, not just use it, but, but take care of it. And we've tried to do that here. And I feel like we've done a pretty good job with that. I, I'm very satisfied with that sort of thing. That's a wonderful legacy. And we would hope that whoever comes after us would attempt to maintain it um, maybe not grow bamboo or whatever, but we do have a fairly unique property here with mm -hmm. the creek and the waterfall and, you know. How much acreage is it? About four, uh -huh. yeah. right. roughly. It always yeah. feels very big to me, so I had no idea. Well, we've left it was. empty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's especially big when you're mowing or <laughs> pulling yeah, weeds, yeah. Sure. <laughs> it also, uh, you know, you think lots of subdivisions are this size. So, sure. So exactly. Right. It yeah. is big right. for this right. area. So finish this sentence, Marianne. Marianne Smith is. Yes, I want to hear this too. <laughs> Sally, that's one of the questions that I. <laughs> well, I was supposed to strike that one. Yes, I think so. <laughs> okay. Marianne Smith is very content with her lifestyle. Oh, that's great. And Jerry Smith is. Very happy. Always, always feel good about waking up in the morning here. If, uh, if I'm not here, if I'm on some other place visiting or traveling, I always miss it when I get, until I get back. Mm -hmm. So there's no place like home. It's, and uh, this is home for me. Indeed. Well, thank you very much, Marianne and Jerry. We're going to take a little walk around the gardens and uh, okay. look at some of this bamboo. It's, uh, it's a lovely place to be in a day like today. Thank, thank you, you for participating. Thank you.
good. It's good. Yep. I think, yeah. Why don't you walk toward them? Yeah, we're gonna walk. Walk, walk this way. Hold hands, act like you like each other. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> okay. I'll get out of his hearing ear. Yeah. Um, let me tell you, one is uh, textilis. And they call it that because they primarily use it for weaving baskets in the Orient. This particular one is called gracilis because if you can take a look at the bamboo itself, it tends to arch over at the top, very graceful. And uh, the normal textilis is just a straight up and down plant. It's also very beautiful, but this one is a little special to us. We really like this one. It's good to 18 degrees, so it's good and cold hardy. It's mm -hmm. drought tolerant. Um, it just has a lot of nice, good things. It grows in full sun or in fairly dark shade, as you can see here. And it does grow a little bit differently in the full sun. It yeah. doesn't reach up for the light quite as much. Mm -hmm. And we have some examples of that down across the creek. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, and if you look back behind the oak there, I don't know if you can see with this, that angle or not. There's one that's a kind of a light blue-gray color. Mm -hmm. oh, the, the sun is on it right now. Yeah. See it That's over? Chungai. The white bamboo. I call yep. it white bamboo. And it's called, it's, it's got nicknames of blue bamboo or white bamboo, but mm, it's it very good. popular right now. Chungai. Alex, why don't you take that around and That one in the back there, the dark green one, is called punching pole bamboo. They use it for pushing boats on the flats around here where there's no motor for motor boats. So that one is used by, by uh, fishermen to pull their boats through the, through the shallow areas around the islands, the uh, offshore islands here. The yellow one to the left there is called Alphonse Carr. It's a variegated bamboo and it loves the shade. It's one of the few bamboos that we have that love the shade. We'll stop up here at the bridge and you can get a close up of the stem, which is very pretty. Okay. 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 We're gonna go up and down here. Sorry about the sweep. Rusty bridge. Okay. Well, this is interesting from the old nursery. Oh, that's a peat shredder. It shredded peat when we had to get it in bales to make our own potting mix before um, it came bagged. And it, it's a, a very much of an antique. I don't know if they still manufacture those anymore or not. I'm sure they don't. <laughs> nor, nor would anybody want to use them, I don't think. They're probably quite dangerous. I don't think OSHA would approve at all. <laughs> Oh yeah, I see them here. Here they are. I've never seen that variety. Yeah, I know. But they love that waxy scale on the bamboo, which is totally harmless. But it's just good lunch for them. Yeah. That's wonderful. Perfect. Record.
vessel that you're looking at right now has got swollen nodes. Every, every section of the bamboo is swollen out. It's called Buddha's belly, for obvious reasons. And um, very slow growing, nice ornamental bamboo. Little cold sensitive, so you have to protect it in the winter time. But uh, so unusual that a lot of people put it on their decks. Uh -huh. so a, nice, a nice plant. This uh, view is of the nursery itself, showing the plants which are ready for sale. And uh, you see that we're kind of low on stock right now because it's the end of the season. But in the spring, we'll be full, tight. So we sell everything that we grow here, which is a nice, a nice way to do it. Mm -hmm. But we grow everything we sell also. Yeah. <laughs> At the end, you can see those tall bamboos. That's an old hammy. And uh, Marianne was talking about two-story and three-story bamboos. Perfect. That's a, a four Very or five. Nice four four sure. or five-story blocker. And it's good and cold-hardy too. It goes down to 21 degrees, so uh, no worries about uh, problems with temperature and things. Mm. Action. A little green things that look like fat asparagus. Oh. What's that? Okay now. Green things that are coming up are the new bamboo shoots. And in about uh, two months, they're going to be up the size of the bamboo that you see up in the sky here. And over here is one that came up about the 1st of July. That gives you an idea of the growth. They go up at just bare shoots, then they start leafing out from the top, and then they get their side, their lateral branches on them. But they're fully mature in about two to three months, probably. Okay. The, um, the flowering plant oh, thank that's you. over there. Good, I, I salvaged that. <laughs> this is the old steam boiler that was used uh, when we were raising foliage plants. It was a steam generator, it's called, and it produced the steam that kept the greenhouses warm. Notice, of course, that the Purdue label on the side there for Boilermakers. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a cyclotherm 75,000 BTU steam generator. 